Welcome to Chargers Sports Network here at BISD Stadium where 10 weeks of Friday Night Lights have come and gone. Cole Pavelio with Kerry Barboza alongside you tonight as we've got two teams that are separated by six games. The MacArthur Brahmas enter with a record of one and eight with a district record of zero and six. Facing off against the Bernie Champion Chargers who sit at seven and two with a district record of four and two. Kerry, tonight we have ourselves a matchup where the fate regarding postseason play is essentially set in stone, but not the seeding for the champion Chargers right. tonight. Yeah, and, and they're not even they, – they, they don't even completely control uh, everything on there. And they what what happens in that Wagner-New uh, Braunfels Canyon game also is going to affect what happens to them. So basically, in a nutshell, if champion wins tonight and Wagner beats Canyon, then the Chargers are the third seed. If Chargers win but Canyon beats Wagner, then all kinds of stuff can happen. And it goes to point differential, and then Chargers would probably end up fourth, but it uh, depends on the score tonight. But So they're going to either be third or fourth. And, I, you know, I think the, the good thing for them is that they made the playoffs because coming into the season, uh, Dave Campbell's Texas Football Magazine had them sixth behind Buda Hayes and Seguin, and they beat those two teams, and they beat them soundly. And so uh, talking to Coach Ellis about it, he said, well, you know, we, we felt like we were good enough to, to get a playoff spot, and so they did, and now they're just it's about seeding. So I know they wanted the one or two seed because they would have gotten the host. It didn't happen, but, hey, they're still in the, you know, they're going to the postseason party, so they're excited about that. And sometimes when you get that seeding in preseason not where you want to see it, that gives you an edge in the season. I mean, it makes you want to be better. Is It looks like the coin toss happened here. It looks like MacArthur will be kicking and – Champion will be receiving in the first half. Champion in the navy with white trim. MacArthur in the white with blue trim. White helmets, maroon, I mean, gray pants. And got one last week of regular season football here in Bernie before postseason plays upon us. And not just postseason upon us, finally football weather is upon us just about as well. It's yeah. touching 70 right now here, right before kickoff, but it's likely going to be down in the 50s by the time this game is over. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, you mentioned it's already week 10. How fast did the week, uh, the season go? Man, it's, a, it's already gone, the regular season. It just seems like it should be in week three just or four. It seems like yesterday we started yeah, this season. Yeah, and it was 100 and whatever degrees. 115 and, on the field. Yeah, and now it's, you Cleats know. Cleats melting. Yeah, and now it's a lot cooler. And, uh, you know, there was some rain early in the week. There was a little bit of rain last week they had to deal with. Not a lot. But so weather, and we talked about it before on the broadcast, but weather is a factor in November, December. So unless you're going to, you know, we said unless you're going to rent the Alamo every week, you're going to be in the weather. So uh, you got to get used to it. And talk about the weather that we've had here in the Hill Country. Champion got a little hint of what they might see in the coming weeks on Monday. I know the New Braunfels area was raining and everything. And now nice and perfect. Yeah. Couldn't ask for a better night really Beautiful for football. Night, yeah. And, you know, even if, let's say you do play in the Dome on a particular week, you still can't practice in there. You still have to practice it at, at your, your place, and you're still out in the element. So, uh, you know, so that's something you got to adjust to, and you got to be able to run the ball. Chargers, Brahma's now kicked off officially by Pierce, taken by 22. It is Cole Reha taking the kickoff. Really good kickoff return there. Got about to the 42, it looks like, to start the – first drive of the game as the Chargers looking to move to eight and two on the season as coach Ellis and the rest of the coaching staff send out the offense one final time in the regular season balling set back two receivers to the right in motion, Bowley, looking for Bowley, incomplete. A little swing pass to Sawyer Bowley, just not able to get it to him. Had him, kind of rushed the throw a little bit. Little offline, Sawyer not able to get 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 it, but uh, second and 10 here. And it's a busy night here at BISD Stadium. It's first responders nine as well. Honoring the military, the fire, the ambulance, and the police as a handoff from Ballin, straight up the middle. Gets about three yards there. Reha on, the on the carry. Jacob 
honoring some seniors before the game as well. A lot of starting seniors in the starting 11 on the offensive side. Champion moving quick here. Coming in now is Logan. They got to allow that because Champion made an offensive substitution. They have to allow the defense to substitute if they want to. They're not going to, but they have that opportunity if needed. Ball and trying to draw off MacArthur. Reha next to him. Switching sides. The snap, balling, scanning, looking deep for DeBerry, and he all oh, just goes through the hands. Yeah, DeBerry had a had a step or two on the on the defender, just not able to get it and uh, incomplete. He wondered if maybe they would go for it near midfield, but it looks like they're at least lined up the punt. It doesn't mean they will, but the coverage there was 40 Carson Zimmerman, the corner. I think if. Barry got that one. That might have been touchdown number nine. Do you fake it? Nope. Well, maybe not. Low snap. Ball and gets it off, though. A good snap. Will pin the Brahmas at the 12. So a three and out for Champion to start the night. But now you got MacArthur pinned back pretty deep in their own territory. And a defensive group led by Gage Goldborg. Goldberg and Evan Cool and I mean this is a defensive team that can play smash mouth football with the likes of Alabama and I mean this is a great defensive squad here. Yeah, and you got Sawyer Bowley back there. He plays he plays Iron Man football both sides. <laughs> a bad snap by Carrazos. And that's going to be a rough start for the Brahmas offensively is Looked like Rosles, the junior for the Brahmas, mishandled the snap. Two very different types of rosters between these two schools. You have Champion with a very senior heavy, and you've got the Brahmas not quite as senior heavy. Yeah, just not, not a lot of numbers. Looking at this sideline, they, they probably only have about 30 guys dressed up to play tonight, so big difference in numbers. Rosal set, two to the left. Looking to the left side, makes the connection. Maybe gets a yard past the original 10-yard marker. But this is a champion defense that will swarm as soon as the ball leaves the quarterback's hands. And that's what makes him so good at only allowing just about 30 points a game. And that's why champion is set up where they are in the season. Three receivers to the right. Goldberg and Price look like they're showing blitz. Let's see if they back off or here they come. There's the blitz. Goldberg gets stopped at the line. Rolling right is Carrazos. He's hit by two, loses the ball, and the ball, will they say it goes out of bounds? And I think they're saying it does go out of bounds, but a big hit there by looked like number two, Grant Menzies. Ethan Stanley was right there. He falls on it, but just not able to get on it. That would have been a great uh, break for the Chargers, give him great field position. But they will say the ball went out of bounds. It went backwards, so it backed him up to the 15. So back-to-back so -back three and out series to start this Friday Night Lights. The snap is good. Pierce laces that one in a tight spiral, and that one's – Right out at the 40, not being able to get to that one is Bowley. So second possession for champion starts right at the 40. Their own territory, 9-14 on the clock. Hey, that was a good punt. Uh, I thought Chargers might have might have starting position inside MacArthur territory, but that punt backed them up to the 40, and they angled it well to where Bowley couldn't get the ball and make any kind of return. So that was a really good punt for them. That was really good back-to-back -back punts we just saw, really. I mean... Special teams isn't easy. Punters are athletes, too, is what is the new I've, motto I know. I've, I've heard that, so that's what I've heard. They would say they are. <laughs> I think if you ask anyone out here tonight, they're an athlete. The handoff, the wing jet sweep by Bully see going ya. to the right side. Oh, boy. He's got the legs. He's churning. He's got the touchdown. Another touchdown for Bully. On the season, nine entering, now it makes it 10. 
Six nothing champion. And I want to say that was a pass because he pitched it forward, so technically it's a pass if he goes nice forward. Nice little shovel pass. Yeah, and, and that's a safe play. It's it's basically like a run play. Like you said, they run it out of the jet sweep, but but what it does if he drops the ball, it's it's not a fumble. It's it's a uh, basically a, a, a it's a, just a drop pass. The extra point up and good by Bell makes it seven nothing here on Chargers Sports Network. All of 13 seconds. And Bowley's a track guy, and you know he gets out in that secondary. Forget it. If, you, if you're going to try to have a foot race with Sawyer, you're not going to win too many times, I don't think. That drive took one play, 60 yards, 13 seconds. Chargers go up 6-0. Extra point is That's good. His longest run, if you count it as a run. That went out of bounds, and uh, the flag will come out. The kick goes out of bounds there. We'll give Regartha the option to move ahead or take it where it lands. Looks like they'll march it forward the 30. And Kerry, you were talking about that last drive. What was the summation of that last drive for champion? One play, 60 yards, 13 seconds, up 7-0. Rosles to the left side, a little sweep. Got stuffed right at the line by this horde of defense that is called the champion chargers. And there's a reason they only allow so few yardage to opposing teams. Tony Graves out there on the corner. Did a good job of fighting off a block and also making the tackle at the same time, basically. Garther going with the spread as they will go. Quite often they'll have that one back. Joshua Speed with Rosles. Two to each side. Looks like a handoff straight up the middle and the defensive line of the champion Chargers stops him, maybe even drops him a yard. Yeah, they're going to lose a, large, a yard, it looks like. They'd gotten two on that pass play. They backed up one there. And Champion has three diff down linemen up front, and then they have line guys on the edge that could either get down or they'll just stay up like they're doing right now. And you got Price and uh, Goldberg there in the middle, just kind of clogging up that middle right there. Carrazos gets the sign from Coach Hurst on the side. Three to the right, scanning uh -oh. to the right, looking for a screen, and he gets hit as he releases it, but looking for a big play here. Number 10, Colton Cornwell, he might go all the way and tripping him up just at the line, trying to get him. Misses him by a half step, makes it 6-0, six, 6-7 six, for MacArthur. After what was a, just about a 71-yard play, I believe. Yeah, it was actually a really good play call because Champion had the blitz. They were bringing pressure, and they just kind of threw they just kind of threw away from it. Uh, it looked like a wide receiver screen there, and then uh, once he got past where the linebackers were, they had blitzed, so nobody was there. And then it was just kind of a foot race. Looks like someone wasn't quite set. That's Joaquin Morales coming in for the field, the extra point protection. Pierce ready to sit to take the extra point. It's up. It blocked. is blocked. It's a live ball. It looks like the ball won't be returned. 
and it stopped right there. So no extra point. Six, seven game for Champion there after the 71-yard touchdown. Wide receiver screen by MacArthur to make it a one-point game after. GVTC is once again leading the way to connect you to Charger linebacker Gage Goldberg. Hi, Mom. See Gage in this exclusive augmented reality experience where you choose your camera angle and place Gage in your reality. I'm really excited to be able to represent my team and thank you GVTC for letting me come out here. Scan the QR code for access and let GVTC bring this Charger experience to connect you to the power of GVTC. 7-6 now, champion leads here on Charger Sports Network after the wide receiver screenplay for the Brahmas. Got them within one now. As you mentioned, Carrie, a really good play by the Brahmas there as champion was going for the blitz there. The kickoff was fielded right about the 26 by Reha and only got about seven yards after the catch. So two quick touchdowns, just in the snap of a finger is all it took for both teams to score when they got the ball back. And it wasn't marching down the field either time. It was big plays so far. Yeah, the ch champion drive was one play and then for their score and then MacArthur Three plays, 69 yards, uh, took a minute 41. So both teams hitting big plays to get on the board early in this first quarter. Bowen rearranging the formation a little bit. The handoff to Reha, bounces to the right side. He's found some room. He tries a spin move, gets about nine and a half. Let's give him, yeah, it's gonna be a half a yard short, yep. It's always hard to tell if they're going to give them the full yard or just go with the half yard. And then you factor in the chain gang sometimes. And I think that's a rudimentary way of measuring. But, you know, it's also a fun <laughs> way of measuring. Ball and set back. Looking to the right side. Going over the top. Going for the deep ball. Finds number 15. It looks like it's Sawyer Bowley again. Gets down to the 14. Yep, he had a couple uh, uh, choices there. Jordan did where to throw, and uh, he went the deepest route. And that was to Sawyer Bowley, who made a nice over-the-shoulder catch and gives him a red zone opportunity first and first and ten here. In motion, 25. Ethan McVeigh going to the right side and maybe four yards. Looks like is what they'll give him. So far, champions gone through the air and on the ground for quite a handful of yards, and that's really what you've seen all season long when you look at the numbers. It was a 42-yard pass play to Bowley. Ballin receives the snap, rolling left, looking for someone in the corner, and he gets Cameron Logan for the touchdown, the H-back. little simple rollout to the left and found Logan for his second touchdown on the year. Makes it 13-6, champion. Back out there, Nathan Bell for that extra point. Looking to tack on one more. Snap is good. Bell up and through the uprights. Makes it 14-6 as champion leads here on the Chargers Sports Network. Hey, I got another one for you. And uh, just look at the hole in this line. You could drive a truck right through there. <laughs> I mean, the refrigerator William Perry could get a first down there. <laughs> but you know who's going to get their number called for this one? Yeah, that's right, Dr. Ferris. 
He's like a ligating linebacker. Boom, just like that. And that's why Ferris Orthodontics is going to get the MVP for this one. Fourteen six champions leading after Nathan Bell remains perfect on the season. Carrie, you're keeping track of the drives. What was the summation of that drive right there? Four plays, 65. Oh, what's that fumble? Oh, and no. Chargers get it. Oh, man. The Brahmas muff it right at the 23, giving the Chargers perfect starting position for their third drive of the night. Hudson Simmons looked like was the Charger that came up with it, number five, just calls a fair catch. The MacArthur return man just not able to hold on to it. Looked like and, it uh, hit him right on the wrist instead of yeah, in the mitts. And cardinal sin in football is to muff it. He did that right there. Is balling and reha back out there for the third time. Well, that last drive was four plays, 65 yards, took a minute 20. So in eight plays, we've had three touchdowns combined. Going up the middle of Reha, maybe gets a yard and a half. It'll give him one. Looks like it's going to be a quick scoring touchdown wise night here in Bernie as I can already start to feel the temperature drop in the booth up here. Looks like Ballin set to go. Pulls it back from Reha going over the middle for Logan again, and he finds him straight up the middle for the third touchdown. Sometimes it looks too easy for this Chargers team. Yeah, just a little skinny post, basically. And uh, Jordan just with a great throw right on the money. Logan doesn't have to break stride at all. And Perfectly placed right into yep. his hands. 20 to 6 now for the Chargers. Ball and making sure there's enough people out there. Bell looking to remain perfect. 40 for 40 on the extra points on the season for Bell. Makes it 21 to 6. The champion Chargers lead here on Chargers Sports Network. GVTC is once again leading the way to connect you to Charger linebacker Gage Goldberg. Hi, Mom. See Gage in this exclusive augmented reality experience where you choose your camera angle and place Gage in your reality. I'm really excited to be able to represent my team and thank you GVTC for letting me come out here. Scan the QR code for access and let GVTC bring this Charger experience to connect you to the power of GVTC. Twenty-one to six, with five and a half just about left to go. Kickoff taken by Champion. Looked like a little pooch kick to the left side. Another fair catch opportunity here. This time they get it at the twenty-eight for MacArthur. That was number eleven, Colton Wood making the catch. Kerry, I mentioned during the break we might start have to start having to count the plays where it's not touchdowns with how this game's going right now. Yeah, you had a one-play drive for a score, a three-play drive for a score, a four-play drive for a score, a two-play drive for a score, so. So far, it's not a march downfield. It's, we're just going for the quickest route possible for these two teams. Ten plays, four touchdowns, seven plays for the Chargers and three touchdowns. Chargers a team of average about 33 points a game. Looking to the left side, it's incomplete. That was Carvalis, Carzales looking to the left side. Champion of the season scored 304 points in total. And they'll do damage in a multitude of ways, running it and passing it. It's looking like pulling a few more players in. Not going with the spread here for MacArthur. As Carizales is set, hands it off to number six. That's Joshua Speed trying to find 
bounce to the outside. There's some laundry on the field. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage. Might be a face mask. And this gives us a perfect opportunity to talk about the referee situation tonight. Referee Ron Tatch, umpire Mark Pennington, headline judge Grady Hatch, side judge Shante Pete Peters, line judge Chris White, field judge Chuck Marquat, and back judge Jordan Bali. They're giving him the automatic first down. I missed the call. It was face mask, yeah. Got to keep the hands low, not trying to go for that face mask. Yeah, just speed when he was trying to get out. Just whoever grabbed him on the corner there, just you know, like you said, just accidentally reached, uh, reached up and grabbed the face mask. It's automatic 15. Speed back there with Carrizales again. Three to the right, one to the left. Seems like the formation that they've gone with so far. Looking, trying and rolling to the left, and he's taken down. That's number 61 at Jack Burkhardt making the tackle there. The senior trying to go out on a regular season high. Burkhardt, 33 total tackles on the season in his second sack. Makes it second in the marathon, it looks like. Yeah, second, second in 22. Yeah, that's a long way to go for a team that's struggling other than one possession to do a whole lot. That's that's a tough down the distance. Here's Alice rolling to the right side. That one's intercepted. That one's Bowley. He's trying to go to the outside, gets pushed down about. It looks like they'll mark it at the 14. And so MacArthur just not finding a track right now so far. So how about that uh, Charger defense slash special teams? They uh, come up with a fumble recovery, and then, then now they get an interception. Soya Bowley just read the quarterback's eyes. He was kind of looking at his receiver the whole time and just jumps the route and uh, almost to pick six. But he does get the interception. And another short field for uh, the Chargers here. And this is not a team you want to give a short field to. Bowley second interception on the season. I was just about to say how MacArthur scored their first point since September 16th against Hayes where they got two touchdowns. Bowen trying to go up the middle, gets stuffed, loses about a yard. Yeah, I'm not sure what the play was there. I don't know. That was executed the right way. Dropped well, I think if you ever lose a yard, I don't think it was executed the right way when you look at the playbook. Yeah, looked like a busted. Looks like a busted play there. I don't know what, what it was, but... Looks like blitz here, maybe. No, the safety's pulled back. Bowling's got a time. Looking over the top again, looking for Bowley. He does not grab it. Bowling, we talked about, plays for the champion Chargers baseball team as well, and he's really shown off his arm here tonight so far. Yeah, there's a lot of guys we were talking about. A lot of the guys on the team are uh, baseball guys. I mean, that... You're going to do two sports. That makes a lot of sense because you get that break in between at Christmas and holidays. Third and 12. Ball looking to reset the play. Looks like the blitz coming from the middle. Ball trying to find somewhere to go, and he loses the handle. 98 was the one that looked like he was going to get to it first. I don't even see 98 on my too deep as I'm actually looking at the wrong part of the too deep that's Kavion Evans the senior for MacArthur is now ball flips to the Brahma's hands a lot of points and a lot of turnover that's a third turnover this quarter and I think the one thing for champion that they'll have to take away so far tonight is that this is their last tune-up before postseason play. And they'll, as of right now, still have a lot to learn and improve upon next week. Hand up off the middle. Looks like about four yards for speed. Bernie last week against Lehman, 135-23. Looking at MacArthur, lost the canyon. They got shut out 40 to nothing. Another little short pass back behind the line, left side, maybe gets to the 
first down marker. I think they'll mark him just a bit short. Yeah, and Chargers, uh, you know, this is their last home game, especially for the seniors, so they want to they go out on a positive note here. Another same play, it looks like that time. Gets the first down, going for about, looks like eight there. Looks like a wrestling takedown there. They couldn't quite see the number of who made the takedown. Like uh, Brooks Jones with the stop. They do get the first down, so. Back to that spread offense. Looks like lined up right at the line, tied in Fitzpatrick. Won't see MacArthur run from anything except the spread too often. Look to the left side, rolling to the left. He gets hit as he throws, and that's another interception for the Chargers. Looks like number two making the catch. That's Grant Menzies. Might have to give Menzies a turnover chain for his second interception. It's 21 to six. We've had four touchdowns and four turnovers in this quarter, so we're still in the first quarter because <laughs> that's a lot of clock stoppage because the touchdowns and then the, the turnovers, so. It's not the nine I was expecting us to come into with. When you look at the stats, it's a little lopsided between these two. Point-wise, Bernie champion, over 300 entering. MacArthur under 100 on the season. And then MacArthur is allowed over 400. Bernie champion, just about the 250 mark. Ball in the offense, back at it. Four three formation for MacArthur. Handoff up the middle for Reha. He gets nine. Once you get Reha going, he's going to be rumbling and tumbling for a good set of downs. Yeah, I want to say that was uh, Castillo. I think Chris Castillo, 26, is in there. So they're giving the second string some playing time here with. Being up two touchdowns and some change. Here's Castillo back there. 20th rushing attempt on the year. I think that was his longest rush. Previously was five yards. Make that nine now in the season as he's going back at it. Bounces to the right side. And he's bumbling and tumbling and he gets the first down. And I think that actually is his longest run yeah. now. He's just setting new highs for himself right now as this the senior. Been behind Reha for most of the season. Let's give him uh, 13 on that run. Sounds like a good number. I like that number. That's my lucky number. So and it's half of his jersey number, so it's coincidental. There you go. So another jet motion here. Bowley gets it right, lined up with ball, and he gets pushed out at about the 35, and there's some laundry on the field. Yeah, that might be a block in the back. That's the one thing you don't want to see here this late in the season. Penalties like that when you're a team trying to push to make a deep playoff run. Coach Ellis talking with one of the refs holding, called. For a really senior heavy offensive line, the only non-senior, the right tackle, Taylor Castillo, a junior. That whole right tackle group, actually, for the two deeps is not a single senior over on that right tackle side. So it looks like first and 19 now. Hand up off up the middle. Looks like they get back to the chains. Three, huh? Castillo, actually, I... I'm so used to seeing Reha being the lead back as. Yeah, that, that was a good game, though. Uh, just they're going to allow Carta to substitute if they want. No substitutes here is the spread formation. Castillo back. Not enough time on the play clock to run it down to end the quarter. Ballin's got a lot of time. Hands it off to Castillo, essentially, and he loses the handle. 
Makes it third and 11. Balling on the season, a 54% pass completion. And 22 touchdowns entering the game through the air. And six via the feet for Ballin. As it's 21 to six. Under 30 left in the first quarter. Castillo back there with Ballin. Ballin looking to go over the top for DeBerry. DeBerry's got it, makes it 27 to six. Sometimes that duo makes it look a little bit too easy. Well, that's just another nice throw on the mark by Jordan Ballin, just uh, right on the money. Looking like Russell Wilson, how he's just heaving it up there and making sure it lands straight in the hands of his receivers, as Russell Wilson used to do on a frequent occasion. Bell looking to remain immaculate. An extra point is up and good, makes it 28 to six. The champion Chargers lead 28 to six, 20 seconds left to go here on the Chargers Sports Network. VDTC is once again leading the way to connect you to Charger linebacker Gage Goldberg. Hi mom. See Gage in this exclusive augmented reality experience where you choose your camera angle and place Gage in your reality. I'm really excited to be able to represent my team and thank you GVTC for letting me come out here. Scan the QR code for access and let GVTC bring this Charger experience to connect you to the power of GVTC. Twenty-eight to six here on the Chargers Sports Network as the Chargers lead. Uh, I think that was the longest time between two touchdowns that we've had so far, Kerry. I mean, it's been an onslaught of offense so far. Yeah, a lot of offense, a lot of turnovers. Though that's the fifth touchdown of the game in the fourth for the Chargers, and I'll recap the drive after this kickoff here. Fielded right at the twenty, so perfect time to recap that drive that we just saw. Well, they go five plays, 63 yards. It took 211 off the clock. They did have, uh, they were in MacArthur territory, had that 10-yard penalty on that on that hold. They backed him up. Facing third and 11, they hit the deep, hit the deep ball and uh, just made it all up in one play. So Jordan balling now four touchdown passes in the first quarter, so. That puts him over the quarter century mark at 26. Hand off to speed up the middle. Gets stopped by 28. That's somebody's hurt. And someone's down. Looks like injury timeout taking it. Looks like Brooks Jones on the stop there. I made the tackle is. Like to Can't see who's down, year. but Day one backs. just hope that he's okay, especially this late in the season. Possibly a multi-sport athlete getting ready for and it's speed, who was the one gets down back up. So good to see him gain up quickly, but here on First Responders Night, the military, fire, EMS, and the police of Bernie being honored as well as Purple Heart recipients. And something you love to see is, I mean, something that's integral in every community is the first responders and former military. It's a great thing to see here tonight. Yeah, honor them before the game. And there's a whole bunch of them that work this game, you know, for security and different reasons. But uh, you mentioned Speed. Well, this will be the last play, but what, talk about a football name, huh? Joshua Speed. That's a that's a pretty or a tra me track guy, too. Speedy Claxton from the Spurs. and to end the first quarter 28 to 6 as that closes the first quarter the champion chargers lead it 28 to 6 here on the Chargers sports network carrie barboza and cole pavelli will be back with you in just a moment 
customer service, faster results. Let Toyota Birdie be your next pick for service. We're family owned and operated. And with express maintenance at our state of the art service center, you'll be in and out in a flash. Right now, get 50% off your next oil change and complimentary loaner cars and rentals. Plus service from our Toyota certified technicians is a recipe for success. Don't wait, experience Vic's pick for yourself. If you want the job done right, schedule your next service at Toyota Bernie. That run by speed was a gain of nine, taken down by, we said, Brooks Jones, a senior. Talk about efficiency for this Chargers team. They've been very efficient over the season as one of the rare times it looks like we'll see MacArthur not going to full spread. Hands off to speed back up the middle and he tries to go for the first down but taken down by a bunch of Chargers. Looks like they'll he'll get it. They'll give him the first down. Yeah, he just needed to get the ball any part of that stripe there at the 35. It looked like he did forward progress. So, actually looks like Carrizales gets it to the right side. Gain of five. It was making sure it wasn't Richmond back there for MacArthur. Oh, speed again. MacArthur trying to go quickly here. Catch the Chargers sleeping. Three to the right side. Saravales. Look out. Gets it knocked down. Going to the right side. And that's a touchdown for the Chargers. Oh. He had a wipeout, but he scored. <laughs> that's... Number 23, Luke Rossi on the touchdown, pick six. Makes it 34 to six, just 48 seconds into the second quarter. Yeah, you make that throw out in the corner. If you throw it late and you throw it short, you're in trouble. And that one was just kind of late. And Rossi read it, just like the one Sawyer Bowley had earlier. Just throw it in that corner. Bell so far, four for four on the extra point, looking to make it five for five. And the extra point is up and good, making it 35 to six, just 48 seconds into the second quarter. 35-6, Chargers lead on the Chargers Sports Network. What's so special about Club Car Wash? Purchase one wash or an unlimited wash plan. We prepare every car before it goes through the wash to get rid of bugs and hard to reach grime. Plus, enjoy complimentary perks like free vacuums and towels. Never drive around in a dirty car again and join the club at Club Car Wash. As we return from the, after the pick six by Rossi, making it 35 to six, as MacArthur was trying to get a drive started and then Rossi just cut across and took it back and made it this 35 to six quickly in the second quarter. As Bell taking the kickoff here, trying to squib it to the left side and that goes out at the 28 so the flags will go out. Champion entered with six defensive interceptions, and it's been a night where they're tacking on interceptions, fumbles left and right with how this game's gone so far. Oli with an interception, Grant Menzies with an interception, Luke Rossi with an interception, and then, then they had the Hutton Simmons uh, fumble recovery. So four turnovers by MacArthur. Tough, uh, tough start to this game by MacArthur. So Carrizales looking to get the MacArthur offense moving forward. They hand it off to Speed up the middle. So far they've gone mostly up the middle with Speed. They haven't really, I think they've bounced out to the outside maybe twice with him so far. But it seems like once Speed finds a hole, he's game time and he's just about gone. It 
so far as the way we've seen him run so far today? Well, I just think, MacArthur, you got to just kind of avoid throwing to the edges. Just try to run it. They got a whole bunch of line at the line at the line of scrimmage. Hand it off to speed. Gets stopped about two yards. Actually losing a yard. So champion in total entered with six interceptions. So they've been tacking that on, as mentioned. And that helps the old stats for the year, right? You get three and almost in a quarter. <laughs> that, that's a whole season almost for some <laughs> yeah. teams. I mean, yeah. at the rate they're going, what, that will be 12 at the end of the game? Not a math guy, but I can do simple <laughs> math. Carrizales back there, not a lot of time, but gets it to the, right, to the left side to Colton Cornwell, the A receiver for the Brahmas. Gets it to fourth and third, they're calling it. Tony Graves with the stop and good tackle by Graves in the open field. It keeps it uh, from getting the first down, any extra yardage after the catch. So it's going to be fourth and three. It looks like MacArthur's going to punt. And we've seen special teams be really special tonight so far with how the few punts we've seen. I mean, when it's not been turned over, they've been really – Kind of immaculate punt yeah, so he, far. Yeah, he had a 45-yarder the first time. Not as far this time, but gets to the nice roll. Goes out at the 30, so quick math of mine says about 35-yard punt from the 40. 940-ish left to go, 35-6. to six. Chargers lead. As it's been... A game of turnovers here tonight in Bernie. And one thing we talked about earlier is district is kind of sewn up with Smithson Valley taking the number one spot. But you look across town here, just at Bernie High School, they're playing Fredericksburg tonight, and they're they're a big district isn't done yet. But yep. I've got a, I got an update. I'll give it after this play. I got a reporter there, and he's giving me an update. It's kind of surprising. Sweep, looking for. Looks like number nine. They get it to that's wow. Cameron Logan, the H back <laughs> again, gets it to the 43. Rudy Vega just with the drag down that time. He didn't grab the shoulder pad, so that's not a horse collar. So. H back lined up again. Ballin gets the snap. Looking deep again for that's. You guess it, and he drops it, looking for Bowley there, and the flag comes out. Yeah, he's not going to be happy with that when he has something to say. You guys be careful, young man. Looks like he got tied up with 26, Rudy Vega. Yeah, Vega's the one that had that nice stop earlier. So we'll see where the P.I. goes. It, they both were quite tangled up with each other. Yeah, it, it looked like it was kind of hand-to-hand. Combat, but uh, get the call here. That pass play to Logan, previous play was 23 yards. So looks like they're waving no it off. So no flag. I, I, th I think that's the right call. I think that's the right call. I agree with you. I agree with them. <laughs> so uh, Greyhounds, like you said, are playing at uh, Fredericksburg, basically for the district title. Bernie wins it. They win it outright, fourth straight year. If they would get it. They're up. Early in the second quarter, Greyhounds up 30 to nothing. Well, for the city of Bernie, that's good. And the Chargers looking to remain in the playoff contention, trying to get the highest seed possible for themselves here today. Blaine Ellis, head coach of the Chargers, is saying, okay, what was the call? Why did you wave it off? He has the right to ask that and get an answer. Yeah, like we said earlier, Chargers playing for uh, trying to wrap up third place. Jordan's going to come off and talk to the coach. Looks like Kevin Brown, the offensive coordinator. And earlier you told me how the best that champion can do is get plus 18, the point differential. And it's really 
kind of up to Canyon of yeah. what the seeding ends up for Champion. I'm kind of curious how that game's going. Can Champion at or Cougars at uh, Wagner finds Bowley gets about three. And you look at Canyon and Wagner both on a winning streak of their own. Canyon four wins straight. Wagner five straight wins and. Wagner overall five and one in district. Canyon four and two, so a big game there at New Braunfels Canyon. Oh, flag came out on that play near the end. Looked like a couple players got tangled up. I don't know if it was after the play or uh, during the play. Looks like holding on the offense. The offense. So marching back five yards. So they're going farther back than five yards, actually. Well, yeah, hold would be 10, I guess, so. But they'll get the down back, so should stay second down. Second and 20 now for the Chargers. Ball in set. Almost gets the Brahmas to jump. Ball in going now. Looking to the left side as that one just falls at the feet of DeBerry. Almost caught him in stride. Balance passes intended for Campo DeBerry. Well, I'll tell you one thing, the offensive line of the Chargers is doing a great job. Jordan's got all kinds of time back there. He just, he's, he's able to stand flat-footed, kind of wait till somebody gets open. That time just not able to connect, but he's got plenty of time to wait. And that's something you love to see if you're the offensive line coach for the Chargers. I mean, the battle so often is won in the trenches, and right now Chargers really giving Ballin in the backfield plenty of time to get set. Ballins has time again, almost gets taken down as he's trying to fight off the sack here, gets taken down by 65, David Powell, almost got taken down by the Sam linebacker, Marcus Servin as well, and we talk about it. And unfortunately, they break through the line that one time. <laughs> yeah, just when we say, what a great job the line's doing that time, I think MacArthur heard us, and they said, oh, yeah, watch this, and they go and uh, – You might just have to stop talking. Yeah, and uh, nice play, though, by MacArthur defense. Make, make a nice sack that time. So Bowen gets the low snap, almost gets hit there, but a deep snap as it goes all oh. the way as it might go into the end zone. They're going to mark it down, it looks like. They'll mark it down at the two-yard line. So great special teams there by Champion. Looks like number five, Hudson Simmons, the one that was downing the ball there, right? Cash Hill, yeah, and Cash Hill down there all kind of doing their best to keep it from going in the end zone. I mean, that was great just gunning down the side and making sure – that ball didn't get into the end zone for a touchback and give MacArthur better field position. Now they're going to have to work right out of their own end zone. Yeah, they're in the two-yard line. They're in a tough spot right here. A team that does not typically run out, and that looks like they might have stopped speed in the end zone. They call it the safety. Makes it 37-6 to for the Chargers as they looks like a player's down. And we'll – Take a break as the Brahma is down as it's 37 to 6 after the safety. Champion Chargers lead here on the Chargers Sports Network. Hey Gage. What's up, Coach Ellis? Hey, grab a seat real quick. Hey, I wanted to talk to you about some of the stuff I'm seeing on social media. And I gotta tell you, it's awesome. This GBTC experience. It's, man, it's really cool. You know, it's drip. GVTC is connecting you to Charger Gage Goldberg in a reality bending way. Scan the QR code for exclusive access and let the power of GVTC level up your reality in a whole new way. We're 
We're back to BISD Stadium here in Bernie as after the safety of the Chargers lead 37 to 6. Carrie, earlier you talked to me about how you've been all over Central Texas today. You yeah. were at the Round Rock, the state meet for cross country, and uh, you said a Charger won the state for the women. Yeah, on the girls' side, Elizabeth Leachman's individual state champion. She she won the race by over a minute, which is crazy at that highest level in the state to win it by over a minute. And just great job by her, Elizabeth Leachman. It's been a long day, but it's been a fun day. I had to leave about 5:30 <laughs> to get out there, but it's okay. Hey, when you're covering these amazing athletes like we get to, it's a great day any day that you see someone like her win a state meet. And I mean, in a sport like cross country, is trying to break off a big return here, gets all the way to the 40, maybe the 41 they're calling it. Evan Cool. Evan Cool, also able to see him for the Chargers on the diamond. We'll likely see him in a few months back with the Chargers on. The baseball team and that baseball team had a great run last year as well. I saw him beat Rouse and at the home of the San Antonio Missions. Then they went to the state tournament and yep, up in Round Rock where I was today. That that that's basically where the the cross country meet is right behind the stadium, the Old Settlers Park. Dell Diamond there in Round Rock balling. Jet sweep hands it off to. They hand it off to Castillo. It's about eight. Broke off his longest rush of the year earlier at, I think we said 13 at the time. I can't remember if he's broken it longer since then, but second and two now for the Chargers. Two wide receivers each side as the Brahmas get to ball, and that's number 22, Jacob Hurst making the tackle. That's a great play by Hurst. Just kind of came in, shot the gap as a linebacker. Brought the blitz in. Nice ankle tackle. Knocks Jordan off balance. Big Mike linebacker, Jacob Hurst, breaking through the old line. Getting the ball in. So they've gotten to him a couple times now in the last that's last since drive. We mentioned this one. Yeah. That the I, offensive I, line was I, doing good. I think they were listening. Third and 14 now. Bowling trying to find something. Find someone right up the middle. Gets taken down at. The 30, we we'll say about the 36. Cam Logan on that one. Well, that's one way to get away from the pressure is you have a very quick quarterback in Jordan balling, so roll him out and let him use his feet to create some space there and buy some time. Really showing off the footwork that he shows off on the diamond as well as a really handy shortstop. Rolling to the left a little bit. Going for the deep ball. Gets it. Just overthrows Logan just a little bit there. Looking for the corner. And coverage was looked like number three. Isaiah Jackson went in there nonetheless. Tight ends each side. Ball and hands off to Castillo. Castillo bumps it up to the middle. And he looks like he gains about four or five there. Gets it to the 20. Under six minutes in the second quarter to go. Third and six. Good, good move by Castillo there. He Nothing there. He kind of went left and uh, got some extra yards. I think there's a equipment or a timeout. I'm not quite sure. I thought it was a timeout taken, but I didn't see any timeout signal of anywhere, and I don't see a player down. Well, 22 went out uh, for them. Hurst, so I don't know if it's an equipment issue or what it was. He might have blood on his knee. Looks like you're giving now they're MacArthur a timeout officially. So with 535 left in the second quarter, champion leading 37-6. to We'll take the break with them. We'll be back after this break on the Charger Sports Network. What's so special about Club Car Wash? Purchase one wash or an unlimited wash plan. We prepare every car before it goes through the wash to get rid of bugs and hard to reach grime. Plus, enjoy complimentary perks like free vacuums and towels. Never drive around in a dirty car again and join the club at Club Car Wash.
And we're back what what we believe is to be the uniform injury timeout taken by MacArthur. You saw Hurst go off, possibly yeah. with some blood on the uniform and something can't have in football. Yeah, and because they burned that timeout, he can come back in because they did burn that timeout. So His whistles continue to go off left and right, trying to get the teams back on the field, it looks like now. Third and six to go for the Chargers. After what was Castillo bounding to the left, had to cut left and got a good chunk of yardage on that second down play. Castillo back there still with Ballin. Two to the left. Pulls it back from Castillo. Rolling right is Ballin trying to find something. He just chucks it out of bounds to kill the play. Couldn't see quite where I am. Had that corner obstructed. And I thought he might be looking for someone there, but no one there that time. Yeah, just throwing it away. He's running out of real estate. He got near the sideline, and so now you're going to let Bell kick, kick up field goal under pressure you know he made that big kick against canyon but uh long of 36 on the year you're gonna need him in the playoffs so why not kick in the game situation field goal here looks like it's gonna be good and it's up right through those uprights makes it 40 to 6 with 517 to go in the second quarter so seventh field goal attempted by bell and he makes that one his long of 36 on the season it was about 30. Tack on the little few extra yards makes it about 35 on that one. So not quite his longest, but a nice field going on the lesson. I mean, what a difference maker it has to have a kicker like Bell on your team. I mean, perfect on extra points and a great leg on field goals as well as Bernie tries to get ready for the playoffs. So you've had a, a safety, and then you've had a field goal. So they've scored five points. But, yeah, and in high school, to have a, a good, accurate kicker is a big deal. You know, when you got a guy that, uh, you know, is pretty dependable. So many teams just pull someone from the soccer team and make a kicker out of them. I mean, it seems like Bell, I mean, you can see him at the next level being a college kicker with how he kicks it here at Bernie Champion as he takes a kickoff here. That one will be fair caught right at the 21. So the Brahmas start at the, their own 21. 5-17 to go in the 40-6 game. As MacArthur looks to score for the first time since the first quarter. I believe it was their second drive that they got that touchdown. So we had that flurry of touchdowns. We had four possessions and four touchdowns. It was all in what seemed like the span of four minutes. Yeah, pretty good. Cool. Two or three plays each. Looks like Speed trying to bounce to the outside. Oh. Gets taken down. Wow. It's about body three. slam. I wrestled for a few years in high school, and I think if uh, you got that one in high school wrestling, that might be a DQ with how he went over the top there. Ethan Stanley. Ethan Stanley. Cool. I mean, cool. On the stop there. The nose in the charger positions, making the stop. Carrizales thought about pulling it back for speed, but the RPL, they go with the run, gets it to about the 34. So a yard to go on third and one. Speed getting up slow. And Speed's... Yeah, he's shaking up a little bit. He's been taking a beat in tonight, and uh, I think they're going to have to take yeah, a timeout Chargers here. Chargers are tuning him in on the field, and MacArthur saw that trying to snap the ball and get the penalty, but uh, Chargers burn a timeout there. So 420 left in the second quarter, 40-6 to six the Chargers lead here on the Chargers Sports Network as we'll be back after this break. Perry Homes is rooted in a tradition of excellence. As a family-owned business, 
we understand what it means to put family first. That's why for over 50 years, we've built homes for more than 50 experience at every stage of the home buying journey. We focus on the elements of home building that make a house a home. This is why Perry Homes has earned a sterling reputation as one of the most trusted home builders in Texas. When you choose Perry Homes, you are choosing a home that has excellence woven into every. So on the third and one play, the Brahmas get a yard and a half to get the first down. So the march downfield continues for the Brahmas as speed still in there. Got shaken up two plays ago, but remains in there. Three receivers to the left. As the Brahmas are looking left, finds Colton Cornwell, who has really been a bright spot for the Brahmas so far here tonight. I think that's at least the third time we've mentioned him and will likely continue to mention him. Yeah, and uh, I tell you, they keep throwing to the edges. <laughs> they, they've had three picks on the edge, but they keep throwing out there. So I mean, when the Chargers have a middle group like Goldberg, Price, and Cool, and Bowley up in the middle, I mean, you don't really have any other option but to try to go to the edges and find some space. Looks like speed stopped at the line by Goldberg, and it looks like some more players down are just a little slow to get up, and it looks like speed again. A little slow to get up, and speed's taking a beat. Backup for him would be Jacob Mendoza, and speed about 10 yards away from the ball. I don't know if he's just trying to catch his breath or what, but I mean, still a little slow to get to the line. So we'll have to keep an eye on him. Three Brahmas to the right. As hit late there by number 54. Not No flyer on the plate, but that was Stanley getting late to Carrizales, and I thought with how late he got to him, might have been a flag, but first down. Carrizales is... He's kind of limping himself, so. Backup for Carrizales would be Trey Richmond, the sophomore. I think they're just trying to let him gather himself, burn some clock here just to see if he can shake it off. Going the three receivers to the right again. Carrizales trying to roll out to the side. Gets taken down. That's big Brandon Karbowski making the sack. And now... Carrizales even slower to get up. Him and Speed right now just taking haymakers left and right. Yeah, they might have to take a timeout or About let to them tough it out. Two minute mark in second quarter. And if you could sum up how the Brahma season have gone, I think it's how it's gone right here in this past few minutes. They've just hit been hit with haymakers left and right all season long been blown out six times on the season 63 and nothing against Wagner on the seventh and now again Carrizales taken down in the backfield couldn't quite see who got the tackle I see oh speed is speed is down now so 54 and the flag the flag came out on the side so I'm not sure I see 54 for the Chargers, holding his hand a little bit. That's Ethan Stanley, the nose tackle. As Speed gets helped back up, it goes off on his own, but with a little, little bit of help. I mean, he's been taking a beating. This. Yeah, well, so on that play, the side judge over there threw the flag on the MacArthur side, so I'm not sure if something was said to him. And they're talking about it. But there might be a penalty on this one. Right now it would be third and 25 for the Brahmas. Could be a sideline warning. I have to wait and see what it is. Possibly unsportsmanlike. Unsportsmanlike. Yeah, that's what it is. I think somebody said something to that official. I don't know. Man, it was a long 
third down before, and now it's. Man, they got to get to comfort to get a first down. <laughs> it's going to take a miracle. And wow. I mean, it was third and 25, and there's more between them and the 50 yard line. Third and 40 is what it officially is, and they're going to have to try to find essentially run a Hail Mary here with minute 10 ish uh, to go. Yeah, I think they're just going to take it in. Just. Just hand off and take this into the uh, halftime. It will run the play. Actually, Carrizales handing off, and it's not Speed back there. Speed's been wearing the pink gloves and didn't see the pink gloves there. So we'll have to see who it is. Timeout taken by the Chargers. Right before 40-second mark. And Zachary Hayes with the carry number 20 that time. And so Chargers are looking to score one last time here before the half. They're going to... They're going to have a chance on fourth and 41, make them punt, obviously, and try to get one last score in before it uh, gets to halftime. With how the two punters have balling, has done it today, and Pierce for the Brahmas, I mean, you'll likely start if you're the Chargers at around the 50 to the 40 with, I mean, really good showing of punting here today with what we've seen is fourth and 41, though. I have to be kicking it from. Special teams has been quite special tonight with what they've done. Bell's been perfect on the extra points and on his field goal attempt. Then you see the punting of Ballin and Pierce, and both of them have had punts that have pinned their opponent back in their own 20. Pierce right at the four-yard line set. So we'll see how far he gets it. Return of one, maybe 40 and a half. And I mean, you don't typically hear praise given to the special teams, but with how it's been tonight, both of these punters have done quite a good job of helping their defense pin back the offenses. Yeah, so Champion, they'll start at the 41 here, their own 41. So, like you said, around near, near midfield. So, they have one one timeout, I believe. So, you know, this is what you want to get down for playoffs. You want to get this right. You want to, you know, because like you said, this is your last tune-up before the postseason. And so, you're trying to get everything, everybody on the same page and get everything fine-tuned. Chargers have shown that they can go – Make the long plays. Ball and sets. And he's rolling to the right, trying to find someone. Finds the sideline. He found they're giving it to Cameron Logan. Didn't see if they stopped the clock or not. Yeah, that's, they, yeah it's a first down. So either way, it'll stop temporarily. So running a minute drill and just trying to find someone again. Finds Logan again, and he goes out of bounds. Gets about... Six there. So. Well, they run two plays in 12 seconds. That's pretty good. They're uh, trying to save that last time out, I think. Second and five now. Ballin fakes the handoff to Castillo. Going over the middle. And he gets it to the 34. To, that's number 25, Ethan McVeigh, the tight end. 15 on the clock. So trying to have him snap it here. Timeout has to be taken by the Chargers. It's it down to 10. Well, they got 10 seconds, no timeouts, it looks like. So like it to try to stop it and then bring out a field goal kicker but or bring out Bell. But, you know, if he, if he doesn't, uh, they don't get any yards here. You might still want to try a field goal. Maybe it's an incomplete pass. Just see what Bell's range is in in a and there's in a game situation. With, talk about with pressure. Wanting to see Bell's range. I think you can't really ask for a better night. The smoke stack over on the far side, the band shack, and you see the barbecue smoke, and it's just sitting there yeah. right in the lights. And, and, the, and the flags are just kind of laying limp there on. on and I mean, the from a certain distance in practice, but there's nothing like. Having 11 guys running at you, trying right. to stop the ball. Exactly, because uh, yeah, you can you can kick all day in practice, but in, in, when you're in a game and it's pressure, and like you said, there's 11 guys trying to block it. That, that's a little different. So I think 
go for one more play yeah, here. You've got probably one more play. It's got to be a quick hitter, though. It's got to be a sideline route. It's been to McVay and Logan so far. Bowling sets, looking to the right side, looking for Bowley, and he gets to Bowley, and he, that's the touchdown. Makes it 46-6 to six right before the end of the half. Or just throw a Sawyer Bowley for a touchdown. That's another option. <laughs> well, I like that because it was an end zone shot, and it, if, it, if he doesn't catch it, it's incomplete, and you're going to have a chance at a field goal if you want it. So that was a good play call at that time. And, and it's actually personal foul. Or from the passer, it looked like there. I didn't see ball and take a hit after the play, but that's what looked like the call was. So Bell looking to remain... Perfect. It looks like someone jumped off sides a little bit there, but Bell does remain perfect. Makes it 47 to 6. After the extra point, we'll see what the call is. I think there's some offsides, maybe. It looks like some extracurriculars of some sort is going on. Saw number 68, Taylor Castillo, talking to. Call a hold on the defense. So it's offsetting, so they're going to have to kick it again. And it looks like well, Bowen will hold the ball. I thought for a second there the Chargers might try to go for two here and see what their two-point opportunities could look like in the postseason if necessary. But it's like holding on the picking team, actually, as they're marching back the Chargers. That was great clock management. They took over with 30 second, 37 seconds. They call a timeout, and then they score in four plays. And now Bell taken down after the kick, and no flag there, but the extra point is up and good. 47 to 6 for the Chargers. We'll stick it here with under 10 seconds left in the second half. I mean, a pretty close – I mean – you can't say it's a perfect half, but scoreboard-wise, it's been a perfect half of football for the Chargers. A lot to talk about in the locker room, though, for the Chargers and a lot for the Brahmas as well with the kickoff still to be taken. And you talk about working the two-minute drills and practice all the time to see how quickly you can score. The clock started at, what, was it 57 or 37? I know it was... It was 37 when the Chargers had the ball at the 41. And they hit so, a they hit a uh, hitter to to Cam Logan that went for 13 yards, and they hit another one to Logan. So 59 yards in 33 seconds, really showing off the offensive prowess of the Chargers. And now one final kickoff to be taken is looks like some conversation between. A ref and possibly Coach Hurst there on the far sideline can't quite get an eye, but are they going to be taking the extra point again with how, or are they just? Uh, there, I think there was a penalty on the on the kick, so they're going to kick off from the 45. Looks like. Looks like they were about to march it all the way back down to the extra point position, but the kickoff will be taken from the 45. So, so in a. In a normal game situation you might onside kick just because you'd have a chance at a short field but I don't think you I don't know I, don't I think know this could be do. a pooch or a squib and just run off those four seconds see if you can put it through the uprights test out that leg for real <laughs> so Bell kicks it off and that will land about five yards short of the uprights so Brahmas get one last possession, four seconds left at the f as the score sets at 47 to six. Yeah, just take a knee and take it in. First half just about done here at BISD Stadium. 23 and 56 seconds down, another 24 to go. As Brahma's get it at the 25. They'll take it on that far hash. Looks like just they actually look like they might try to run a play here. Not going to kneel it. Carrizales fumbles it. He just falls on it with two seconds, and that will run out the 
first half clock. So, Kerry, that's in the first half done here at Bernie ISD Stadium as Chargers lead it 47 to six. What have you seen so far? I mean, it's been a offensive turnover heavy game. Yeah, and and, and the game's kind of gone. Chargers obviously heavy favorites coming in, and, and uh, you know they've had a few miscues here and there, but uh, overall, you know, you've scored 40. Seven points going into halftime. You know, we saw Cole Reha. He, he didn't play much past the first quarter, so he's probably going to get some rest, saving him for next week. And so, uh, you know, guys are going to rest. Guys are going to get the – I would be surprised if the starters played a whole lot of minutes in that second half. You know, Jordan Ballin's probably going to come out, I would think, at a certain point. And, and you basically, you've got the lead you, you've wanted. Uh, you pretty much got this game uh, in hand, and so I, I think you're going to see a lot of uh, – other guys starting to play a little bit more in that second half, and then uh, just, they're just at this point. Chargers just trying to wrap it up, get out of here, get ready for next week. Don't get anybody hurt, and just get prepared for the playoffs. Chargers forty-seven, Brahma six. Cole Pavelli and Kerry Barboza with you after the half here on Chargers Sports Network. Hi, I'm Sammy Gillette, principal at Cibola Creek Elementary. Thank you for watching the Bernie Beat. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to the award-winning Bernie Beat, sponsored by the Bernie Star. Here are the top stories from around Bernie ISD this week. The champion Chargers boys water polo team made history once again. The Chargers earned the 2023 UIL Class 6A State Silver Medal. Champion fell to Louisville Marcus 25-12 in the state championship match to earn their second straight silver medal. Earlier in the day, the Chargers defeated Pearland Dawson 10-9 in the state semifinals to advance to the title match. The Chargers finished their season with a 25-4 record. A Bernie ISD student was showcased worldwide. Champion senior filmmaker Caroline Cabral was invited to attend the All-American High School Film Festival in New York City. Cabral's film Lifeline received Best Animation Recognition at the event following a state championship win last year. The festival had entries from all 50 states and more than 40 countries and is the largest student film festival in the world. Bernie ISD has another all-star coach. Bernie High School girls basketball coach Amy Reedy was selected to coach Team Gold in the inaugural San Antonio Sports All-Star Basketball Game in March. Reedy has led the Greyhounds to earn two state bronze medals in the past three seasons and has a record of 69-7 in the past two years. Reedy joins Bernie head football coach Shea Hendricks, who will coach in the San Antonio Sports All-Star football game in January. The Bernie and Champion cross-country teams will compete at the UIL State Meet this weekend. The Chargers race on Friday, while the Greyhounds will run on Saturday. Bernie and Champions cross-country teams qualified for the state meet thanks to their success at the Region 4 meet with the Charger boys and girls winning championships. Bernie ISD earned another statewide award. BISD received a superior rating with an overall score of 96 in the Texas Education Agency Financial Integrity Rating System of Texas. The superior achievement rating is the state's highest, demonstrating the quality of BISD's financial management and reporting system. This is the 12th straight year that BISD has achieved the superior rating. Those are the top stories from around Bernie ISD this week. 
Thank you for watching and have a great weekend. Hi, my name is Lucy. Welcome to Voss Middle School. Today's wow moment will be in Mrs. Rice's classroom where the students are learning about body systems and dissecting frogs. Ms. Sangdahl, the previous science teacher at Voss Middle School, wrote a grant for 10 synthetic frogs for us to use during our frog dissection. The grant purchased 10 synthetic frogs. These frogs are called synth frogs and they are extremely realistic synthetic frogs constructed of water, fibers, and salts that model a female frog in size, anatomy, and feel. Students that are apprehensive about dissecting a once living creature are more comfortable exploring this synthetic alternative. My students have enjoyed the synthetic frogs because they're able to look at something that doesn't necessarily gross them out. Um, it's also a really good model for them after the dissection process to see the different body systems um, another day or if a student has been absent. We just want to thank everybody at BEF and the donors that made this possible. Thank you so much. Thank you for supporting every student, every teacher, and every school in Bernie ISD. GVTC is once again leading the way to connect you to Charger linebacker Gage Goldberg. Hi, Mom. See Gage in this exclusive augmented reality Maria. experience where you Dr. choose your Price. camera angle is your and play Gage in Dr. your Pepper. reality. I'm really excited to, to be able to represent my team, and Dyer. thank you, GBTC, for letting me come out here. <laughs> I like Scan the QR thing. code for access, uh, and we'll let GBTC Ooh. bring this Very charger sweet. experience sweet. to yeah. connect you to the power of GBTC. If you're a doctor, why are you here? Because I know how to fix reading. I don't know how to fix legs, but if you have a broken reader, I can help a reader get fixed. Jose Maria Alvarez. Okay. Dr. Price, is your favorite drink Dr. Pepper? It used to be, now it's Diet Dr. Pepper. <laughs> I like Dr. Pepper more. Ah, you do? Why? Mm -hmm. Very sweet. It's very sweet, yeah. That's pretty good. I'm Levi Nicole. If you're a doctor, mm -hmm. why are you here? Because I know how to fix. Uh, my name is Thomas Hatton. I served in the United States Navy for 22 uh, years. Uh, my primary job was, it was kind of a mixture of several things. I landed uh, helicopters, I drove the ship, I worked at Navy jails, I did years and years of law enforcement, so my, my job kind of entailed uh, different things uh, throughout my career. I was what we call a Senior Chief Petty Officer, which is equivalent to an E-8, uh, enlisted E-8. I enlisted because I grew up in a small town, a very uh, poor town, and so I was looking for a way out. The option was go to college or join the military. And so I uh, had a friend that was in the military. He kind of told me the good times he was having. And so that's kind of how I found a way out of poverty. I, I enlisted in the military and it was one of the greatest things I ever done in my life. I imagined the military before I joined, it was being a, a culture that was different from anything uh, that I could imagine as being a, a civilian. Just a day-to-day -day of just things detail uh, being somewhat difficult, but uh, I imagine just being a culture that was so different from civilian culture that you would have to have the experience for yourself. I would say the one thing I remember mostly is, again, I joined the military in 1985, communicating. Sometimes we did not have reception, so being able to get that email from my wife and my family uh, every now and again was probably one of the most things that I remember of being on deployment because it kind of grew me into the person that understand that I wanted to protect those that were not in the military. Uh, it shaped me as a family man. I met my wife in the military. I have two kids that are permanently uh, that are currently, I'm sorry, serving in the military. So I would say yes, the military made me who I am. It was the best thing to happen to an 18 year old kid from a poor town. Uh, up until now. And so, yes, absolutely. 
Yes, there absolutely. Uh, there's this senior chief. His name is Don Cates. Uh, when I reported to San Antonio Lackland, which was my last tour of duty, I was an E7 at the time, and he wasn't the senior chief at the time. And uh, and he kind of passed those things on to me on how to become a senior chief. Uh, he was actually the guest speaker at my uh, retirement ceremony. So, uh, Don Cates, thank you so much. Thanks for your wisdom. Uh, thanks for still being a friend, and just thank for being uh, that person who I can count on. Uh, to this day. Hi, I'm Cameron Broick and I'm here with my sister Kendall Broick. Today's wow moment will be in Miss Shipman's classroom where the students are learning how to play chopsticks on the ORF instruments. Um, I wrote a grant for ORF instruments. Um, as you can see back here, every student has their own instrument. They're not waiting on each other to play. They're not waiting on each other to learn their parts in, in music. And so we're accomplishing so much more than we, what we could have done if we only had a few instruments. So this is just a great thing to have enough instruments for everybody. Thank you so much, Bernie Education Foundation. We couldn't do this without you. We're learning so much, and we just appreciate it so much, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for supporting every student, every teacher, and every school in Bernie ISD. Hello, my name is Jake, and we're here at Fairfax hey, Ranch Elementary School. What's up, Coach Ellis? Hey, grab a seat real quick. Today's wall moment will be in Mrs. Yeah, McCarr's classroom where the students are learning about engineers in the making. every student, every teacher, and every school in Bernie ISD. Hello, my name is Jake, and we're here at Fairfax Ranch Elementary School. Today's wall moment will be in Mrs. Bacar's classroom where the students Captain Mark Tyler Voss Middle School is proud to introduce Jericho Wilkes as the Bernie ISD Limelight student. Jericho has served her fellow Eagles in student council all three years and is currently a valued member of the National Junior Honor Society and the student council president at Voss. She has a big heart and is willing to serve our campus, even earning the Captain's Club Award for acts of service. In addition, she was nominated by numerous teachers to earn an Outstanding Student Award during both the 2021-2022 school year and for the first nine weeks of this school year. Jericho is a wonderful asset to our school. She is a quiet, confident leader who pushes herself to achieve the highest levels of success in athletics and academics. She understands that hard work, diligence, and effort are necessary to achieve excellence. Whether you see Jericho at an academic UIL meet helping her team achieve top awards, digging deep to help our Eagles win against a rival, or providing thoughtful insight in class, she is doing so with a smile. Jericho is a great big sister and a wonderful example to her siblings as well as her fellow Voss Eagles. She makes a difference on our campus each and every day. We are proud to recognize Jericho as our Limelight recipient, and we hope she always remembers to soar, Eagle soar. GVTC is once again leading the way to connect you to Charger linebacker Gage Goldberg. Hi, Mom. See Gage in this exclusive Hi, augmented reality Maria. experience where you Dr. choose your Bryce. camera angle is your and play Gage Gage in Dr. your Pepper. reality. I'm really excited to be able to represent my team, and thank you, GBTC, for letting me come out here. <laughs> I like Scan the QR code for access, and let GBTC bring this charger experience to connect you to the power of GBTC.
If you're a doctor, why are you here? Because I know how to fix reading. I don't know how to fix legs, but if you have a broken reader, I can help a reader get fixed. My name is Jose Maria Alvarez. Dr. Price, is your favorite drink Dr. Pepper? It used to be, now it's Diet Dr. Pepper. <laughs> I like Dr. Pepper more. Ah, you do? Why? Mm -hmm. Very sweet. It's very sweet, yeah. That's pretty good. Hi, I'm Sammy Gillette, principal at Cibola Creek Elementary. Thank you for watching The Bernie Beat. GVPC is once again leading the way to connect you to Charger linebacker Gage Goldberg. Hi, Mom. See Gage in this exclusive Hi, augmented reality Maria experience Alvarez. where you Dr. choose Price. your camera angle is your and favorite place Gage in Dr. your Pepper. reality. I'm really excited to, to be able to represent my team, and Diet thank Dr. you, GVTC, for letting me come out here. <laughs> I like Dr. Pepper. the QR code for access, uh, and let GVTC mm. bring this very charger sweet. experience very sweet. to yeah. connect Pretty you good. to the power of GVTC. If you're a doctor, why are you here? Because I know how to fix reading. I don't know how to fix legs, but if you have a broken reader, Hi, I'm Ellie Kirk and welcome to Faber Elementary School. And today, we will be going to Miss Salazar's classroom to learn about the grant she received for ukuleles. Three puppies, and I have two really silly ones and one really weird one. Go. Hi, my name is yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you play for the NFL? I did, but I don't tell many people. It's just you're my secret. Wow. What, what team did you play? Oh, it was a long, long time ago. The team doesn't exist anymore. I was the only player, and I couldn't get anybody else to play with me. That, that's one adventure I don't have yet. Um, okay. So no NFL.
Hi, I'm Wyatt. Welcome to Champion High School. Today's wow moment will be in Ms. Zamzow's classroom, where we're learning about momentum. So last year I put in a grant request for uh, these Bluetooth smart carts uh, for my AP Physics classes. I teach AP Physics 1, 2, and C, and these carts are going to allow us to collect data, real-time data in the class. Uh, they're smart because they can connect to the Chromebooks via Bluetooth. They have sensors built in. There's a motion sensor. There's four sensors. Uh, so these carts are really going to elevate the data collection that we're able to do in the classroom. The benefits for my students they're able to see the data real time. So as the carts are moving, the graph is building. I want to say thank you so much to all the donors uh, that donate to the Bernie Education Foundation because without you, we wouldn't be able to experience as many things as we are in this classroom. And, and for that, I truly, truly thank you. My students, thank you. So keep up the good work. Thank you for supporting every student, every teacher, and every school in Bernie ISD. Hi, I'm Sammy Gillette, Principal at Cibola Creek Elementary. Thank you for watching the Bernie Beat. Hello again everybody and welcome to the award-winning Bernie Beat, sponsored by the Bernie Star. Here are the top stories from around Bernie ISD this week. The Champion Chargers boys water polo team made history once again. The Chargers earned the 2023 UIL Class 6A State Silver Medal. Champion fell to Louisville Marcus 25-12 in the state championship match to earn their second straight silver medal. Earlier in the day, the Chargers defeated Pearland Dawson 10-9 in the state semifinals to advance to the title match. The Chargers finished their season with a 25-4 record. A Bernie ISD student was showcased worldwide. Champion senior filmmaker Caroline Cabral was invited to attend the All-American High School Film Festival in New York City. Cabral's film Lifeline received Best Animation Recognition at the event following a state championship win last year. The festival had entries from all 50 states and more than 40 countries and is the largest student film festival in the world. Bernie ISD has another all-star coach. Bernie High School girls basketball coach Amy Reedy was selected to coach Team Gold in the inaugural San Antonio Sports All-Star Basketball Game in March. Reedy has led the Greyhounds to earn two state bronze medals in the past three seasons and has a record of 69-7 and in the past two years. Reedy joins Bernie head football coach Shay Hendricks, who will coach in the San Antonio Sports All-Star football game in January. The Bernie and Champion cross-country teams will compete at the UIL State Meet this weekend. The Chargers race on Friday, while the Greyhounds will run on Saturday. Bernie and Champions cross-country teams qualified for the state meet thanks to their success at the Region 4 meet with the Charger boys and girls winning championships. Bernie ISD earned another statewide award. BISD received a superior rating with an overall score of 96 in the Texas Education Agency Financial Integrity Rating System of Texas. The superior achievement rating is the state's highest, demonstrating the quality of BISD's financial management and reporting system. This is the 12th straight year that BISD has achieved the superior rating. Those are the top stories from around Bernie ISD this week. Thank you for watching and have a great weekend.
Hi, my name is Lucy. Welcome to Voss Middle School. Today's wow moment will be in Mrs. Rice's classroom where the students are learning about body systems and dissecting frogs. Ms. Sangdahl, the previous science teacher at Voss Middle School, wrote a grant for 10 synthetic frogs for us to use during our frog dissection. The grant purchased 10 synthetic frogs. These frogs are called synth frogs and they are extremely realistic synthetic frogs constructed of water, fibers, and salts that model a female frog in size, anatomy, and feel. Students that are apprehensive about dissecting a once living creature are more comfortable exploring this synthetic alternative. My students have enjoyed the synthetic frogs because they're able to look at something that doesn't necessarily gross them out. Um, it's also a really good model for them after the dissection process to see the different body systems um, another day or if a student has been absent. We just want to thank everybody at BEF and the donors that made this possible. Thank you so much. Thank you for supporting every student, every teacher, and every school in Bernie ISD. Uh, my name is Thomas Hatton. I served in the United States Navy for 22 uh, years. Uh, my primary job was, it was kind of a mixture of several things. I landed uh, helicopters, I drove the ship, I worked at Navy jails, I did years and years of law enforcement, so my, my job kind of entailed uh, different things uh, throughout my career. I was what we call a senior chief petty officer, which is equivalent to an E-8, uh, enlisted E-8. I enlisted because I grew up in a small town, a very uh, poor town, and so I was looking for a way out. The options was go to college or join the military. And so I uh, had a friend that was in the military. He kind of told me the good times he was having. And so that's kind of how I found a way out of poverty. I, I enlisted in the military and it was one of the greatest things I ever done in my life. I imagined the military before I joined it was being a, a culture that was different from The six after a half, what have we seen so far? A lot of turnovers, I know, and a lot of quick offense when the offense is going. Yeah, a lot of scoring by uh, the Chargers. They had four touchdowns in that first quarter, get the 28 points, and then in that second quarter got a little different, but they had a defensive touchdown, they had a safety, they had a, a field goal by Nathan Bell, and then they had a touchdown pass. Uh, Sawyer Bowley from Jordan Ballin. Ballin has thrown one, two, three, four, five touchdowns tonight. So That's 27 on the year for Ballin through the air. Six via the rush for Ballin as the Chargers are set to take the field here for the second half as they're run out of the giant horse head in just a second. And Ballin will, we saw... Browning warning it up. Yeah, yeah, before. I wonder why that horse has such a long face. It must be sad. All right, guys, wrap it up. That's it. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> We're here. We're not here anymore <laughs> next week, so <laughs> that's it, guys. We're done. we, we got to get all the bad jokes out early, and we got to get them up because we, we won't have it next week. But, uh, yeah, I would, I would be shocked if the starters played a whole lot in this second half. I, I, I would think. Jordan's probably done. You know, Rehad, I don't think, played much in that second quarter. I think he played that first, not even that for, whole first quarter with yeah. how it looked. So Castillo was in there. Yeah, and so I, I, I think, you know, we're going to see other guys on, on both sides of the ball because you, you've got this thing pretty much wrapped up. And so, you know, at this point, you just want to get out of here, focus on the playoffs, and just get guys, keep them from getting hurt, get ready for next week, and – that's going to be the focus. And this is the perfect opportunity for the Chargers to really test their second string and third string and go deeper into their lineup than they have gone to do in earlier in the season so far. Yeah, and one thing it, it does is, it, you know, guys maybe that aren't playing a lot this year that are sophomore juniors, uh, you know, this is a chance to get game experience and then get you ready for next year when, it, you know, maybe you're going to start next year so. Uh, this helps you with that as well. You look at the start in 11 for the Chargers in offense. Just one non-senior. That's Taylor Castillo at the right tackle. As Chargers kick hand off to the Brown ones, they'll be working right to left. Chargers left to right when they have the ball. The kickoff taken by Bell. 
And another muffed ball by the Brahmas, and they get it at the 18, though. But that's the second muffed kickoff that we've seen for the Brahmas here today. And it's a hard thing to see when you're one and eight on the season that your team's still making mistakes like that in week 11 of the season. And in well, they're, they're fortunate to fall on the ball and not give up a turnover. But we'll, we, we think we know how the Chargers are going to play. Let's see how the MacArthur plays it as far as what they do with their starters and all that. Looks like Zachary Hayes, 20 at tailback. Carrazas still at quarterback, so speed out of the game. They're not going following. They're too deep that. I have. They had speed at the lead tailback Mendoza behind him, and as mentioned, Zachary Hayes listed as a linebacker and a running back at 5'4", 160. So we'll see how many starters on both sides of the ball continue to play here. Chargers have a few. Not not everybody's out. Some are, some are in. Carrizales back there handing off to the newly entered Hayes, and he'll be maybe get a yard. It looks like they'll actually give him a gain of nothing there. So third and four, a minute down in the second half. As right in front of us, you see Brock Browning warming up. Not a lot of playing time for Browning this year. Five attempts. Through the air, has a touchdown. Yeah, he had a touchdown on a basically a trick play where he he lined up as a receiver, took the ball and threw it to Jordan Ballon, who went out as a receiver, kind of the Philly special. Carrizales finds oh, oh just boy. hit him straight in the numbers and couldn't hold on to it. Looked like Andrew Fitzpatrick, the tight end. So a three and out to start the second half for Mac. He's trying to turn up field before he had it secured, and uh, that would have got him a first down. Looks like Pierce still out there taking the punts for the Brahmas. You know, that fog machine stuff's kind of lingering on the field there. <laughs> I actually think that might be the it's, uh, from fire the, yeah, hydrant. It's, Not it's, the hydrant. I'm an English uh, major. The, I know the, words. The it's hose, fine. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of lingering right over the field. Fire suppression, whatever the word is. As that one rolls all the way to the 28, back there was Sawyer Bowley just letting it roll. Is now Brock Browning of the Chargers enter the second half for their first time. Trying to see if I can find Jordan Ballon on the sideline, even. Can't find him quite yet, but I'm sure he's out there cheering on his team. His fellow senior, Brock Browning. Browning 60 yards through the air on the season. And Bowley's on the sideline as well. That's Fancher at the Z. So Browning back. Hands it off to Castillo, who gets chopped down. Maybe a yard. You say no gain for Castillo. Yeah, there could be a lot of handoffs in this half, and uh, I think you'll throw like MacArthur threw on third down, trying to get that first down, but you ain't going to see a whole lot of passing other than on third downs. And off, pulled back by Browning. As that one hits the hands of what looked like Colton Wood and yeah, should have been intercepted. So I see Caleb Krause is there as well for the Chargers. 21, Lucas Benavides and Lampkin on the far side. So the second string receiver core is out there along with Castillo and Browning. Haven't got an ID yet on the line yet, but Browning back. Looking to the left side for Lampkin. Lampkin overthrew by Browning there. Someone did break through on the right side. I'm seeing Andrew Stasberg was in there as well, so it looks like the backups for the line are in there as well. The second offensive group is in there, balling to take the punt. Yeah, he can't. He's 
He's not going to be quarterback, it doesn't look like, but he can't get the whole night off because he's going to be there. He's still their punter, so you know, it's not one of those things where he can take the shoulder pads off or leave his helmet in the locker room kind of a thing. Low snap, ball, and gets it off, though. <clears throat> that one picked up on a bounce by 26. That's Rudy Vega in the shoestring tackle there. Keep the Brahmas pinned back at their own 44. Well, the second half has started the way the first half started. Three and out, three and out. Each team, three three plays and a punt, three plays and a plunt, and uh, that's how it started. And that's when the fireworks started after that. So clock not running right now, 929 on the third quarter clock. Carrizales back. to the left side. Trying to find Isaiah Jackson Rice, the junior. So second and 10. Just a back shoulder throw, just a little behind him. So with the 47 in the first half for champion, <clears throat> past their average points per game of 33 on the year. So they'll tack on a little bit more to that average. Run to the left side. It was Speed who we saw so heavily in the first half. Entered, had a few heavy hits. We saw Speed taking, shaking up a few times, and I think it's going to be Zachary Hayes in and at running back for the rest of this game. Right now for the Brahmas. Maddox Wildy in on the tap, number 40. In at the linebacker spot there. So Carrizales back with Hayes. Tied in lined up to the right side. Carrizales rolling that way. And that one is, they're saying. It's going to be a late hit on the quarterback. It's incomplete, but they're going to call a late hit. So they'll get a first down. Carrizales gets up limping again. He's kind of had a rough night. We know Speed kind of banged up. Trying to see if I can find Speed on the sideline. Don't see him right now. But that doesn't mean he's not hidden in there somewhere. There is a number seven, Michael Morak, on crutches. We haven't seen him, but he's listed as a quarterback for MacArthur. Speed might have hit a bump, so I'm <laughs> last game, got to get them all out. Nothing, we're not saving anything. Hayes trying to bump out to the right side, gets about six there. Makes it second and four. William Tolar wrestles him to the ground there. Borg, I don't see him right now. No, he, I think he played one play, I thought, that first play, and then he came out after that. Something that Gold, Gage Goldberg is doing is he teamed up with GVTC and uh, did an AR thing where there's QR codes around the field is taken down there by number 30. That's I don't see 30 on the Nair stats that chart for seeing on the roster. <clears throat> It was enough for a first down, though, so. Had to get to the 30, got to the 29, so. The clock should be running after that first down, after they reset the chains. Tied in, line up to the left side for the Brahmas. Two receivers to the right. Carrizales hands off to Hayes. Hayes tries to bounce out to the left side, taken down there in the backfield by Wild, Wild, Wildy. <laughs> Maddox Waldy, the junior. Will side lot backer making the stop there. As the Brownmans are getting their play from Coach Hurst. Yeah, usually there's two guys calling in plays. One's one's the live read or the hot read, the other's kind of the dummy read. They're just trying to keep teams from guessing what they're calling. 
Carrizales looking for a ball over the top, trying to find number three, Jackson Rice, and they're saying incomplete. Jackson Rice trying to call for the catch, but. He, he came close. Uh, he just didn't, uh, I thought he had caught it, but he just, you know, there's no replay, so officials right there, but he came close to catching it, just not able to complete the catch and have control all the way down to the ground. And one thing we've been talking about is the scoring around the district. Canyon taking on the Wagner Thunderbirds. Cougars lead 14 to seven now in the fourth quarter, the start of the fourth. Wow, that's that's not really all that surprising though. They, they're a good team. Here's Alice being pressured here quick, taken down at the 40. A few Brahmas slow to get up. Wildy again with him. We've called his name quite a bit tonight in the second half. He's another nice tackle. A lot of his tackles have been for losses, so you know, it's fourth and forever. But at this point, this point of the game, this point of the season, you just got to go for it. Under six minutes to go here in the third quarter. Saw Sorensen pressuring Carrizales there in the backfield with Suero. Wildy was the one that got to him. Going all out spread and called <laughs> for a. He's like, hold on, hold on. Whistle blue, don't don't hit, don't hit. Timeout taken by the Chargers as the champion Chargers lead 47 to 6. Under six to go in the third quarter. We'll take the break with them here on the Chargers Sports Network. Charger linebacker Gage Goldberg. Hi, Mom. See Gage in this exclusive augmented reality experience where you choose your camera angle and place Gage in your reality. I'm really excited to be able to represent my team and thank you, GBTC, for letting me come out here. Scan the key. We're back at Bernie ISD Stadium as we continue to look around the district as Carrizales, fourth and 21, trying to pin the Chargers back on a fourth down play, but looking around the district at halftime in Smithson Valley, it's the Rangers up against Seguin, 35 to nothing. So the district champs pouring it on against the Matadors. Yeah, all they're playing for is a perfect district season. They're, they're district champs regardless of what they do tonight. And Wagner and Canyon, but that's the one that we have our eyes on and we'll Trying to keep her tabs on that one to see if it stays 14 to 7 or if it moves in favor of the Thunderbirds. But both those teams are on so a nice winning streak. Who's winning that game? Canyon 14 to 7. Canyon's up, okay. So if Canyon wins, that might drop the Chargers to fourth. That's important information as we have here. The jet sweep there. Taken down about six yards back. That was. Lucas Benavides on the jet sweep there. Lucas Benavides. San Roman with the nice tackle. Looks like nine-ish minutes to go in New Braunfels as Cougars are still up 14 to seven. So a seven point differential there. Browning set. Hands it off to Castillo looking to the right side. Charges through one. Brahman gets taken down at the 40. Yeah, he just kind of lowered the shoulder there. Castillo, he said, I'm, I'm just going to take on whoever's in front of me, and he runs over him and makes it a very manageable because it was second and 18 after that that last play, so he gets about 16 of that, so going to be third and two now. Yeah, third and short, so probably might be four down territory here as well. Browning set, back in motion is Benavides. But trying to go up the middle there is Castillo taken down behind the line of scrimmage, losing about yard, yard and a half, maybe two. Makes it fourth 
and four. Sending out the punter, Jordan Ballin here. Four and a half to go in the third quarter. But Smithson Valley looking to remain perfect in 6-0 district play. Wagner 5-1 in district. Burning champion 4-2. Bowen's punt is off. And over in. Will pin back the Brahmas in their own 20. And not as good as earlier as pinning down at the 2, but maybe about the 14 there. 47-6 game here in Burney. Start at about 70 degrees here in the hill country. Dropping down right at 60 right now. Greyhounds 40 to nothing in the third quarter, so on their way to their fourth straight district championship, and all four district titles have come with perfect district uh, records, so four straight, that's never been done uh, in the district. It's called the four for four for a reason for the Greyhounds as we're right about four minutes left to go in this third quarter. Carrizales, a low snap. Hayes going to the left side, but hit hard by number 55, Colin Lee, the nose. As the clock continues to tick down, under four now officially. <clears throat> Seemed like that first drive for each team, they, they kind of tried a few passes, and, and MacArthur may steal, but I, I think Champion may, may also still pass, but it's going to be a pretty run heavy, I think. Second and 12 now for the Brahmas. Carrizales slow back to the pocket to get set. So he takes the snap, a low pass there to, that's number three, Jackson Rice. And slow to get up is, oh, this, slow to get up here is Carrizales, it looks like. Didn't see him take the hit, but looks like he's favoring that right leg. Yeah, he's been kind of banged up a little bit. Might be cramping, I don't know, but he's, uh, he, he's kind of taking a few pretty good hits tonight. Him and his backfield partner in the first half speed took quite a few heavy hits. So during this injury break, we'll take the break with them. Chargers 47, Brahma 6 here on the Chargers Sports Network. Hey, Gage. What's up, Coach Ellis? Hey, grab a seat real quick. Hey, I wanted to talk to you about some of the stuff I'm seeing on social media. And... I gotta tell you, it's awesome. This GBTC experience, it's, man, it's really cool. You know, it's drip. GBTC is connecting you to Charger Gage Goldberg in a reality bending way. Scan the QR code for exclusive access and let the power of GBTC level up your reality in a whole new way. And it was Jadevin Ortado, the left guard, that was down, not Carrizales. As Carrizales makes the pass there to the right side, gained the first down for the Brahmas. But Ortado did go off under his own power, so that's good to see. As Carrier mentioned, might have just been cramps. Cornwell with the catch there. First, first down, move the chains. As even though the weather's not in the hundreds like it had been at the beginning of the season, it is starting to get drier and your body's just not perspiring as much as it needs to be. Carrizales, three receivers to the right. One to the left, that's Jackson Rice on your near side. Hayes back with Carrizales, moves to the left side. Carrizales looking to the right, trying to uh -oh. roll right, trying to get out of the pocket. Throw it away. Just gets it out. That was, I don't want to take a 10-yard sack, so let me throw it away that time. But that last play, that was a good play for them. Got them that first down on third and six. They got eight. That was a play they scored on 
similar type of play in that first half, that wide receiver screen. So they haven't done it a whole lot, but it's worked well whenever they've been able to get the ball to the receiver. So second and ten now for MacArthur. Carrizales going to the line. Haven't seen them gone go a single play under center. They've all been out of the shotgun. In motion here, that's number 10, Colton Cornwell. Someone we've had to call his name quite a bit. Loss of about two there for Cornwell on the jet sweep. We saw Chargers do that little sweep play earlier in the first half, and Bowley ended up just breaking it off for a big touchdown run. So Maddox with another tackle. Third and 13 now. As the Chargers defense remains stout, about a minute and a half left to go in the third quarter. Three on the near side for the Brahmas. Carrizales gets the snap. Look to the left side, a wide receiver screen, incomplete. And a flag yep. on the play. It's going to be rough in the passer. And then they tried that wide receiver screen again, just did not. There wasn't any time. They did hit him, so it's going to be a penalty. It's going to extend the drive. First, automatic first down. It's been a play that's kind of profitable so far <laughs> for the Brahmas. One of the few plays that has worked out well for them this evening. So a new set of downs for MacArthur. Two receivers to the far side. Carey trying to catch one of the t-shirts <laughs> shot at us here. Carey, I hate to break it to you, but there is a window in your way. Oh, darn it. And you, I think you might have to go through that little girl <laughs> right in front of us, and I don't think that, she would appreciate that. That won't be her problem. Second... <laughs> 14 to go now. So, Will Deer Wildy, I'm not sure exactly how you, where you put the pronunciation, but he's had quite a second half here, another another stop, and a lot of them have been behind the line of scrimmage like that one was. They lose five on that one, or four. Look at Wildy's stats. Tackle for losses, didn't have one before tonight. Got about a dozen so far in this quarter. But seven total tackles. Carrizales looking to the left side, finds Jackson Rice. Gets taken down by a few chargers as he keeps the legs churning. Gets 11. Got the first down, yep. Actually got 15. But just kept the legs moving. And now we'll see what the Brahmas can do with as he loses his shoe there. He was running so hard he came out of his shoes. Might need a... Get some spat tape on those to keep yeah, those from coming gonna, off in the future. It's going to be the quarter there. So that shirt, I think, just might have gone all the way up to one of our camera people up top. But at the end of three, the Chargers lead it 47-6 to six over the Brahmas. Cole Pavelio and Kerry Barboza will be along with you in the fourth quarter here on Chargers Sports Network. My husband is not easy to surprise. We've been married for 11 years. I have not been able to surprise him one time. I coordinated with Tyler to surprise Matt with the baby reveal at Chick-fil-A. I said, yeah, let's do this. This will be amazing. I bought this onesie, and he's like, I got you covered. We put it right on the tray for him. Tyler's behind me on my right filming the whole thing. Wait, no. <laughs> oh my gosh, I was so surprised. Mama Nugget. And Papa Nugget. <laughs> that is awesome. And we're back here in Bernie, the start of the fourth quarter in the Chargers faithful, having a good night here tonight in the fall weather. I tell you what, that was a quick quarter. No points. Chargers only had the ball twice, went three and out, three and out. So Loose ball on the field there over by the first down chains. Taken off by the ref. But now Brown was back in action. Carrizales looking for the left side. Jackson Rice got it tied up. <laughs> yeah, he, that's that's the right call. A little little shoulder fake, little pump fake there. Pretends he's throwing short. There's Throws. definitely some interference, but I think he sold it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of hand flying and flailing on that one to <laughs> make sure he got the call. But that that. Uh, you know, that play by the defender, that's the right play. You know, you, you prevent a touchdown maybe, so you take the penalty, kind of lesser of two evils here. 
So just keeping an eye out still on that Canyon Wagner game. Three and a half left to go in New Braunfels. Cougars still lead 14 to seven over the Thunderbirds. Wagner currently sitting in the second spawn district standings. Then Bernie champion, then Canyon. Smithson Valley with the district championship in hand already against Seguin. First down and 10 for the Brahmas. Carrizales as the fourth quarter. Clock is a ticket. Looking out on Blitz on the left side, but pulls back, and that one finds that's <laughs> Andrew Fitzpatrick and got about three, but then was pushed back about 10. So second and they're looking like six. Second and six after the catch by Fitzpatrick. He had about six guys dragging him backwards. Forward progress, though, gets him to the 30, 37-ish. We talked about how this Chargers defense will just swarm the ball as soon as it leaves the quarterback's hand, and you saw it right there. I mean, I think half the defense was on that one guy yeah. pushing him back. <clears throat> so Carrizales back in with the play. Tied in to the right side, lined up behind the tackle. Low snap, just gets it to Hayes, who loses the yard. Yeah, that one, you can you can blame on that snap just because it's so low. It kind of throws the timing off on the play. You can tell the play just kind of developed late, and uh, that was bad news for them. And Chargers, good job getting in there and blowing that play up. Michael Rodriguez at center, the junior. Carrizales getting the play from the sideline right at the 50. <coughs> See, moving to that slot spot. That was number eight, Fitzpatrick, the tight end. Carrizales, another low snap, just manages to pick it up before the defense gets to him, but he's trying to roll to the left side, trying to make something of this, and he gets about five, or makes it fourth and five, two-yard gain. Trying to make something out of nothing, got a little bit, but not too much. That was... Yeah, they're going for it. Carrizales looking over the top to the left side, looking for Jackson Rice, and he fell down, and they're saying pass interference, I think, on the defense that will go against... That's Cash Hill, the corner. Yeah, this time the back, the, the furthest, the further official away is the one that threw the flag. The one right on the, the, the side judge, he didn't make that call. It was the one... The back judge, basically. And I don't. I didn't see any <coughs> interference, but Jackson Rice did go to the ground. I don't know if he felt an arm hit him and decided to go for it and sell it and get it. Or well, that's three penalties of uh, 35 yards that have kept this drive alive for MacArthur. They've had a. And you can. Champions had a 15, a 10, and a 10. Be so. sure Coach Ellis is not happy with those three penalties. I mean. Last final regular season game and postseason is next and this first and ten straight up the middle gets about two for MacArthur. And you can't have those penalties in postseason play if you want to make a deep run if you're champion. So second and nine. One of the Chargers had the ball number 43. Nico Lopez just handed to the official. Carrizales finds someone straight up the middle and Breaking forward there is the touchdown for Fitzpatrick, making it 47. That's 12, 47 to 12 after the Fitzpatrick touchdown. Just found him straight up the middle. As you see Carrizales there finding Fitzpatrick right up the middle, breaks a tackle and takes it to the house. Kind of a busted coverage. He just got behind the defense. There's nobody really back there with him. Pierce looking to tack on the extra point. He puts it up and through the uprights, making it 47-13. Chargers lead. Nine and a half minutes left to go in this fourth quarter. Chargers Sports Network.
It's 47-13 after the Brahmas touchdown extra point. That touchdown by Fitzpatrick, and what a drive that was carried by the Brahmas there. Their first touchdown since the first quarter. Yeah, that was a uh, time-consuming drive. 7.43 off the clock. I'll recap it after a second here. And the kickoff goes out of bounds at the 26. But a little slant route there by Fitzpatrick right across the middle and broke a tackle and took it to the house for the Brahmas. Their second touchdown of the night and their first time scoring in total since September 16th against Hayes where they scored 14 and tonight they're out to match that possibly. Their season high for the Brahmas was 42 back on August 31st. So, Kerry, you said you'd have the recap. I think you're still working on that recap. Yeah, well, it went 12 plays. They had uh, three penalties uh, on the Chargers that helped kind of extend drives. One was on third and 13, another was a 10 yarder, and then one on fourth and four. So, 12 plays, 87 yards, 743. Browning keeps it and runs it to the right. He's got a few. He'll go out of bounds about five yard gain there as he pulled it back from Castillo. Yeah, he, he was trying to stay in bounds, Brown. He knows he needs to try to stay in bounds just to keep the clock going, just his momentum kind of took him out. But they're going to keep the clock moving, so good for them. As it sits right now, Bernie will move to 8-2. and two. MacArthur will go to 1-9 and nine on the season, and you look at Looks like it's about to be final in New Braunfels as Canyon leads 14 to 7, still over the Thunderbirds. Castillo going to the left side, gets some room, goes past the 40, the 50, hits someone hard, and goes out right about the 44. Oh, a little bit of shoving. Tempers some flaring. Extracurriculers at the end of the season. I was I saw 98 K Evan Evans. Sportsman like. It's going to take the ball to about the 30 or 31. So we officially have a final from New Braunfels. The Cougars beating the Thunderbirds 14 to 7. So, Kerry, I know we've been keeping an eye on that, and now it kind of goes to point differential for Champion and Canyon of where the seeding ends up. Uh, the 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 run and then the penalty right there about a 30 yard play for the Chargers that time. Is it now on the MacArthur 29 first and 10 for the Chargers? And yeah, that may drop the Chargers to fourth, even if they win tonight. Handoff kept by that's number six. That was Hudson Leonard. So not Browning back there. Well, Hudson, quarter, he's a senior, so letting him get some reps in. And you know, he was warming up on that last MacArthur drive. He was throwing the ball with Jordan, just kind of soft tossing. The you look at up. the depth chart at quarterback for the Chargers, and you got Ballin, Browning, and Leonard, all seniors. So that quarterback quarterback spot for the Chargers will be a new face next season. Low snap to Leonard looking to the right side. Gets it off on a sidearm throw looking like Pat Mahomes back there. Gets about six. Yeah, nice sidearm sling there. and uh, Makes it third and five. That was, a, that was a tight window he had to throw into and he did a really good job of it. Making a little highlight reel on just one play with, I mean, could throw it through a car window with how he threw that one. Moving car window at that. Leonard back in the shotgun. Third and five. Far hash. Leonard holds on to it. He is taken down. Ball came out. <laughs> we'll see where we'll. And MacArthur has the ball. So a new set of downs for the Brahmas as it's 47-13. We see the replay on the big board right now. Leonard just trying to make something out of nothing and losing as he was taken down under six to go 
here in the fourth. So it's been a game of turnovers for both teams. I mean, that first half was turnover after turnover after turnover. The second half calmed down a little bit, but turnovers are coming back here in the second half. At the end of the second half, I should say, with under six to go. Yeah, first one of the half. So the full spread, Carrizales hands it off to Hayes. Slow to get up a little bit there. Left guard, Jadrian Ortado. We saw him go off earlier in the game. Zachary Hayes carries for Barton. Looks like number five on the defense for the Chargers looking to get the call in. Now it's Hudson Simmons and at the defensive back position, Junior. 3 4 formation for the Chargers still. Full spread. Hand off to Hayes up the middle, finds the seam, gets about three. Making it third and they're actually giving them about six there. Third and two, making it for the Brahmas. Coming in here is 14, Joaquin Morales for, that was Logan Garza. 20 on the play clock. As Carizales continues to get the play. Carizales handoff once again to Hayes. The Chargers stop him at the line. Get in the yard there. Fourth and one is what they're marking it as, and it looks like Brahmas will go for it. Yeah. Last game of the year. <laughs> You're not going to punt. <laughs> Just four minutes, yeah. Just let it go. Going back in. Looks like actually is. Logan Garzan going out there was Adrian Villalobos. Blowouts everywhere tonight. Comfort's up 51-0. Late hit. And temper's just starting to flare here in this last half of the fourth quarter. And see the play there by Cornwell. Late hit. That looks like 19 of the Chargers. That's Trenton Haddock. So first down for the Brahmas. So Greyhounds win 47 to seven. So we got 47 to seven. Comfort went in 51-0. Got this one 47-13. And then Holy Cross was beaten up on uh, Geneva 54 to nothing. So we got the final from Canyon being 14 to seven. Trying to get an that update was, on the that was close. Smithson Valley score. 49 to nothing right now in Spring Branch. Under nine left to go in the fourth there. First and 10 for MacArthur. Carizales hands off to Hayes. Hayes manages to get a yard after a little low snap. So I have breaking news. I've texted the coach. Oh boy, we've got breaking I, news. I, I've texted a coach and I said, since Canyon won, does that drop you to fourth for sure? And he says, yes, we play College Station in the first round. So that will be at College Station, correct? Yes, it would have to be because they 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 won the district because they're, they're the one seed. If champions are, is the fourth seed, College Station would be the one. So, yep, Chargers making a road trip. Got to make the, what is it, about two-ish, two and a half hours? Yeah, it's, it's. We'll check the map later. It's It's way out there. We'll see where we're going. But Carizales hands off to Hayes once more, trying to take some time off the clock at this point. Two and a half, about to go. Makes it third and one. As the Charger faithful, though, continue to cheer on. Yeah, and, and really, you know, the crowd has really stayed. I mean, you know, it's a blowout. It, it's, kind of, it's not been a running clock, but it kind of has. It's just been a lot of run. No one's really kind of trying to anything, you know, out of the order. They're just kind of running the ball, trying to get out of here. But the crowd has stayed, so. I think this is kind of the epitome of what you think of Hill Country football in yeah. Texas. And, and, you know, it's the seniors' final night here on, at home, so you know, why not support them all the way to the end? 
as Hayes makes a relatively large play taken down there by Michael O'Hare. So everyone getting to play a little bit here tonight for the Chargers. One last regular season game as the clock ticks under two. Yeah, they're, they're trying to get in the touchdown. <laughs> they, they want to try to get to that 20-point plateau. I mean, that will be a big mark for the Brahmas. They haven't touched that mark since September 8th against Veterans Memorial and then against Marshall where they had their lone win on their season opener. Yep, that'd be a good way for them to go out, close out their year with the, with the touchdown. Those Chargers want to prevent that, so we'll see how it plays out. Another run by Hayes up the middle, gets about four more again, and about averaging four yards. And I mean, doing a lot of work these running backs for the Brahmas have. They've been charging ahead as well. Speed in the first half. Now, Hayes in the second, hopefully speed is all right, and we didn't see him the second half and haven't been able to find him on the sideline. Had some heavy hits in that first half, so we wish him the best as it goes under one minute. Likely get another play, maybe two, but Kerry, as it sits right now, Bernie Champion will move to eight and two. How about that? You go five and two, you go eight and two overall, and you're the fourth seed in your district. As one final touchdown maybe for the Brahmas, and they're calling it a touchdown. Yep, he's caught it in the corner. Can't quite get an eye on who caught it, but I, I mean. 12. 12 would make it Logan Garza. So, replay on the board. Looked like it was Garza as they just. At well, this point, for the Brahmins, it's kind of a moral it's victory. It's pride, yeah. Good for them. You know, they they, they went down swinging. They, you know, the game was out, pretty much out of out of reach. But hey, they played hard to the end. So, and I think this says a lot about Coach Hurst and the MacArthur team as well. I mean, they never gave up this whole season. It was a rough season for them. But I mean, three touchdowns against a team that, in a different district, might very well be the district champion in the champion Chargers. I mean. It just so happens that Champion is in a tough district. I mean, it seems like when you get to this part of Texas, you just have tough districts all around. Yeah, well, we talked about 8-2, and two, and they're the fourth-place team in the district. So, uh, I mean, and it's not all, you know, all those weren't district games, but they're district games. They were 5-2, and two, which is very respectable to go 5-2, and two, and that only gets you fourth place, so. Yeah, that tells you how tough it is. What's going to be interesting is they're going to realign in, in, in the spring. And so Chargers will be they'll, – they'll, they'll stay 5A D1, which they are now, and they'll probably stay right there. Uh, but it will be interesting what district they go in with. I mean, just look around at the possible schools that you might face. And, I mean, near schools, you got Davenport, who will likely stay at 4A. I imagine you got have Piper as well just down the road and the likes of Tyvee, Fredericksburg. You have Bernie across the street as well. I mean, this isn't an easy part of football for the state of Texas, no matter where you are. As kickoff will be taken by Pierce, one final time for MacArthur. Back now is Cool. And this one, just a tight spiral to Bowling Hill, fielded at the three. So with under 30 left, You'll imagine it will just be a need to end it here for the Chargers. Well, that drive by MacArthur to end their season on offense. Nine plays, 70 yards, took 527. So he scored twice in this fourth quarter. I see Coach Ellis talking to one of the officials, and he's taking off his headset. I think it will likely just be a knee here with how things are going. 47-20, champion leading, under 30 to go. And it looks like victory formation. Looks like Browning's back in there for this. And he will just take the knee. And that will do it. That closes out the 2023 regular season for these two teams as MacArthur closes their season at one and nine, champion moves to eight and two and sets their sights on the playoffs. Carry, I mean, you've been covering this team all season long and both these teams are 
going out on moral victories of their own style. And you see the Chargers cheerleaders going wild as well as all the fans that they've made it through another regular season and another year of regular season football and Bernie is done. Yeah, well, like we talked about, the big thing for the Chargers is that they had an eight-year run from 14 to 22 where they made the playoffs. 2019, they go to the state semis. Best year, uh, you know, deepest run by, by a Bernie ISD football team until last year when Bernie High made it one round further. And uh, so they have that eight-year uh, playoff streak snapped last year, and they don't make it last year. And the goal this year was let's get back to the playoffs, and they did. Uh, they were hoping to finish higher than fourth, but, you know, they got in. We talked about it at the beginning. They were picked sixth, and they ended up, you know, in the playoffs. They beat two teams that they weren't supposed to beat. And so, you know, I know you, you wanted a higher seed and you wanted to host the game, but, hey, you know, you made the playoffs, and so a lot to build on. And, uh, you know, I think it's, it's been a great year so far, and they want to continue. And, you know, if there's a uh, – there are districts that are so even that a four and a one is not, not that big of a deal. It's not, it's not that big of a discrepancy in the matchup. So it's going to be a good game next week, I think, when they play College Station, it looks like. Bernie will make the about 200-mile <laughs> trip to College Station about three hours away as they close their season on eight and two. And for – Kerry Barboza, Cole Pavelio, and the rest of the Chargers Sports Network. Good night from Bernie. The final 47-20, one last time on Chargers Sports Network.